Hi, and welcome to the Pearl Eco Carbon Markets Education Series. In our previous videos, we looked at some of the standards for issuing carbon credits, the additional verifications that can enhance the value of credits, and how blockchain technology can help make these processes smoother and more robust. Before we start to look at the financing of carbon offset projects, we need to appreciate the timeline for a typical project from start to finish. This is important because each stage in the development process requires funding, and all this work must take place before a project can issue carbon credits. As we've covered REDD+ in a previous video, you should be familiar with this acronym for Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation. The time period for a typical Red plus avoided deforestation project can vary depending on various factors, but for context, it is crucial to think in years rather than weeks and months. These factors include the project size and complexity, the country or region where it is implemented, the readiness of the project participants, and the specific methodologies and requirements of the chosen carbon credit standard. So let us look at the process the carbon project developer must be successful at implementing at every stage. The initial phase involves project development, which includes activities such as identifying potential project areas, assessing baseline emissions, estimating potential emissions reductions, engaging with local communities and stakeholders, and designing the project activities. Depending on the project's scale and complexity, this phase can take several months to a few years. Accurately determining the baseline emissions, meaning the emissions that would occur in the absence of the project, is a crucial step. You will remember from our previous videos that we discussed the importance of additionality. Baseline assessment involves gathering data on historical deforestation rates, forest carbon stocks, and other relevant parameters. The baseline assessment can take several months, including field surveys and data analysis. The project then needs to undergo validation by an independent third party to ensure that it meets the requirements of the chosen carbon credit standard. The validation process typically involves thoroughly assessing the project design, baseline calculations, monitoring methodologies, and stakeholder consultation. The duration of validation can range from a few months to over a year, depending on the standard and the efficiency of the validation process. After successful validation, the project is registered with the chosen carbon credit standard. We have discussed the different carbon credit standards and their requirements in previous videos. This step involves submitting the required documentation and paying the registration fees. The registration process can take several months to complete, depending on the administrative procedures of the standard or program. Once the project is operational, regular monitoring and reporting are conducted to verify the actual emissions reductions achieved. Verification is usually performed annually or at predefined intervals and involves independent audits to ensure compliance with the project's stated objectives and methodologies. The verification process can take several months to complete. After the successful verification of emissions reductions, the project becomes eligible for the issuance of carbon credits. The duration from verification to issuance can vary, but typically ranges from a few months to half a year. That's a lot of stages that can cumulatively add up to a lot of time. These stages have financial implications, such as sending field teams out to take samples or conducting community consultations, not to mention a lot of expert time-crunching numbers and liaising with various verifiers and validators. And all of these need to take place before a project starts to issue credits. With carbon markets poised for significant growth, and some projections estimating its value will reach $250 billion by 2050, up from just $2 billion in 2020, there is a desperate need for more financing to allow carbon projects to be developed. In our next video, we will look more closely at the sources of finance that are available to developers for the projects before they start to issue carbon credits. But for now, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be alerted when that video drops. Thank you for watching another video in Pearl Eco Carbon Markets Education Series. Until next time.